the Puerto Rican rattlesnake himself, Luis J. Gomez. Put your hands together, New York City. What the fuck is up? <laughs> Holy shit! What the fuck is up, white people? A sea of white faces. <laughs> Had I known it was gonna be this many white people, I wouldn't have dressed in my white supremacist outfit. <laughs> my fucking Nazi uniform. This really doesn't look good for me. Uh, do no crowd shots at all. That's the rule, okay? <laughs> This is great, man. I don't mind performing for, for white men. You guys aren't that bad in my book. <laughs> Everyone fucking hates you guys, though. It's true, right? <laughs> Public enemy number one, the white men. They fucking hate you, dude. I'll tell you right to your face. Go fuck yourself, you white piece of shit. <laughs> Look, they love it. Look at them. It's all white guys. They're like, yeah, get him. <laughs> get that white guy over there. White guys are not the problem, okay? White women are the problem. <laughs> Let me explain to you why. Because they have all the same privilege, but they're fucking sneaky about it, you know? <laughs> white women have single-handedly convinced everyone that they are also minorities. God bless your souls, white women. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. You talk to a white chick in 2018, she's like, that's right, I'm also a minority. <laughs> I have the same plight as the black man. I have to deal with all this discrimination in tennis class and at Whole Foods. <laughs> Life's hard. It's true, you know? They ruin all the fun stuff too, right? They tried to ruin catcalling a few years ago. You remember that? That was like a big thing online. They were like, you can't catcall. That was all white chicks. First of all, catcalling is not a white issue. Stay the fuck out of catcalling, white people. <laughs> white guys don't catcall, okay? Black guys catcall, Hispanic guys catcall. It's not even called catcalling, it's called hollering, you fucking nerds. <laughs> we holler at bitches and it fucking works, okay? <laughs> Go holler at a black chick or a Puerto Rican chick tonight. What's up, girl? You look good. She's like, you know I do. <laughs> then you guys try to gentrify our neighborhoods, right? Some white chick moves into Harlem, some black guy tries to holler at her. What's up, girl? You look good. She's like, oh my God, he's raping me. <laughs> Somebody write a blog. It's fucking crazy, you know? They try to kill Louis C.K. <laughs> they won't stop till that man is dead. They're trying to kill Louis C.K., you know? <laughs> Who would have thought in 2018 I would be the most powerful Louis in comedy? <laughs> Nobody saw that coming. What did Louis C.K. really do? What did he do? He jerked off in front of a few women, right? Yeah. Who hasn't? <laughs> what, are we gonna be fucking school children about this? Who hasn't? That's a consolation prize anytime my girlfriend doesn't wanna fuck. <laughs> it's her idea most of the time. She's like, just jerk off, all right? I'm like, fine. Then I do it angrily at her. <sighs> you hit her with your elbow so she can't fall asleep. Wake up, bitch. <laughs> I ain't going to fucking sleep. That's why I'm done. You come on her thigh, you go to sleep, you don't talk about it. <laughs> it's true. And look, I'm a feminist first, okay? Everyone knows that about me. <laughs> I say you gotta treat men and women equally. I really do believe that, okay? But I don't believe that Louis C.K. was treated fairly. I really don't. Because Louis C.K. lost like $30 million worth of TV work. These women were jerked off in front of. That's not the same. <laughs> Like, miss, what would you rather? Would you rather lose $30 million or would you rather have a man jerk off in front of you? I would rather have 30 million men jerk off in front of me <laughs> than lose $1. <laughs> Don't touch my fucking money, are you crazy? I say eye for an eye, okay? I say eye for an eye. You gotta you got give these women retribution because uh, they're victims. I'll call them victims. Here's what you do. Here's how you get, here's how you get Louis C.K. back, okay? What you gotta do is you gotta put Louis in the center of a room 
he can't move, okay? He's gotta sit in a chair, he can't fucking do anything. Then one by one, each one of his victims get to come out, stand in front of him, strip down naked, and masturbate. <laughs> to let him know how it feels. They, they put their leg up on a stool like, take that, Louie. <laughs> Start squirting in his face. <laughs> He's like, oh my God, this is the worst day of my life. I can't believe that I have to deal with this. This is... And look, let's not get this shit twisted. I'm not defending Louis C.K. I don't give a fuck about Louis C.K. I really don't. I hope every comedian that's more famous than me gets me too'd or gets into some sort of accident. Because every time one of them get into trouble, I move up one more notch in the industry. Just, just one fucking, that's all I need is a little progress, you know? Like when Tracy Morgan's tour bus got hit by that Walmart truck. There was like seven comics on that tour bus. I got a couple weekends out of it, come on. Let's talk about the issues, guys. Racism, racism, it's out there, right? Clap your hands if sometimes you're even a little bit racist. Thank you for the honest people in the crowd. If you're not clapping your hands, you're a fucking phony. Let's get real. All white people are a little bit racist sometimes. All black people are a little bit racist sometimes. I know this because I'm Puerto Rican, and all white people and all black people are both very comfortable being racist against each other in front of Latinos. <laughs> yeah, because you both think we're on your side, you know? <laughs> Do you want to know a secret? Latinos hate both of you motherfuckers. <laughs> I hate white people and I hate black people. And that's Latino privilege. Because when the race war hits, we can just wait to see who's winning and then choose that side. <laughs> like, ah, white power, I was with these guys the whole time, all right. <laughs> Built that wall, let's do it. <laughs> and obviously, I'm just kidding, white people are not gonna win the race war. <laughs> Have you seen the Olympics? You're fucked. You guys can't win a race, much less the race war. <laughs> yeah, man. What about older people? Do you guys give older people more room to be racist than younger people, like grandparents? Yeah. You do, right? Of course. I say 80 and above, they can say whatever they want, you know? <laughs> 80 and above, they say whatever they want, you know, but they gotta be 80 in 2018. And then in like 20 years, the last racist person will just die off. I just solved racism. <laughs> You're welcome. 80 and above, they can say whatever they want. 90 and above, they can do whatever they want. If you get raped by a 90-year-old man, get to a karate class. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Beat up that fucking brittle old man. Defend yourself. You know? Like, my grandmother was the sweetest woman in the world. Sweetest woman in the world, but she said some racist shit, you know? because she's from a different time. I grew up in Rockland County, New York, which is right outside of the city. It's about an hour outside of the city. And there's a little stretch along Route 304 that goes from Spring Valley to Muncie. Now, in Spring Valley, it is all Haitian people, okay? In Muncie, it's all Hasidic Jews. So I remember when I was 16 years old, I was learning how to drive, and my grandma would chime in with these fucking brutally racist comments. By the way, that's when real racism shows its face. When road rage kicks in, you're behind the wheel of a car, you can say whatever the fuck you want, right? So I remember my grandmother was trying to protect me, okay? She said, listen to me, when you're driving through Spring Valley, you gotta be careful, because these Haitians are gonna try to steal your car. <laughs> Lock your doors, roll up your windows, don't even stop at red lights, just boom, go straight through. <laughs> Take the ticket, it's not worth your life. And you wanna know why? She said it's because they have pirate blood. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what she said. She thought that all Haitian people moved to the United States on pirate ships. <laughs> Not that they wanted to steal your car. They have to steal your car. They're pirates. It's in their blood. They take vessels. 
But then she said, you got to be even more careful. Once you go down Route 3 or 4, once you get into Muncie, this is a quote, while the Hasidic Jews look safer than the Haitians, they're not. Because what the Hasidic Jews will do is they will wait till you're driving by. Then they will push their baby strollers in front of your car. So you hit their babies so they can sue you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a real lesson that my grandmother taught me when I was 16 years old. That Haitian people have pirate blood and that Jews are willing to sacrifice their babies for a lawsuit. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. I know it's fucked up. I see some of your faces. Did you want to know the most fucked up part about that story? It wasn't actually my grandmother. It was my mom. But my mom wasn't that old, so whenever I would tell the, the story as my mom, nobody would laugh. They'd just be like, that's fucking crazy. She can't say a shit like that. Anyone else even more fucked up about that? It wasn't actually my mom. It's me. I'm telling you right now. If you're ever in Rockland County, New York, these Jews and Haitians, they're everywhere. So, you know, be careful. Be careful if you're driving. A little bit of a gift for you guys. Are there any uh, parents in the crowd? Clap parents if you got kids. Just 10 tired ass, depressed people trying to forget about their shitty kids. <laughs> Clap your hands if you don't have kids. Watch this. Look at that. Look at their faces. Look at everyone. You know, that, you know what that look is? That's the look of freedom. That's the look of no fucking responsibilities to get home to. You got nothing, right? What's your biggest responsibility in the world, dude? Uh, maybe getting to work. Maybe getting to work. You don't even give a fuck, dude. <laughs> Who fucking cares, right? What do you do? What's your, what, what's your job? I work in a machine shop. You work in a machine shop. Nobody cares about your job. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about you. Dude, quit right now. Call your boss right now on my special. And quit your job. How great would that be? If I inspire this guy. Do you love your job? Do you love it? Is this what you want to do for the rest of your life? Then fucking quit it. Let's quit your fucking job. I mean it. Is he on now? You gotta call him right now. What's his name and what's your name? My name's Mike. Connor. All right, call Connor. Here, give me the phone. I'm gonna call him for you. Everyone's got to be quiet. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Hey, it's Mike. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't coming to work tomorrow. Huh? I said I ain't fucking coming to work tomorrow. You couldn't be any more unwanted. <laughs> Look, and now your hot girlfriend's gonna leave you because you don't got a job. It's the only reason you got this chick, too. I was like, I ain't coming. He was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you are replaceable, Mike. <laughs> that's fucking nuts. Do you got a pet at home? People got pets, they think that's like a big deal. I had a dog before I had a kid. I don't give a fuck about that dog anymore. <laughs> you have a kid, that shit all changes. Each one of your pets gets bumped down a level of importance, you know? Like your dog becomes a cat, your cat becomes a gerbil. <laughs> your gerbil becomes a goldfish. Like I'll flush a, a gerbil down the toilet for looking at me wrong. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about a gerbil, you know? Look, it'll change your perspective on everything when you have kids, you know? Like, what's more important to you on a person of the opposite sex? Like, a good-looking face or a hot body? What do you guys say? Hey, all, the, all the young guys say body. They're like, body. put a fucking bag over her head, bro. <laughs> face down, ass up, motherfucker. Very immature, young guys. 
very immature. I say face, I'll tell you why, because you gotta think about this. If you're with a woman, you might have a baby with her one day. If you have a baby with this woman, you wanna make sure your baby has a cute face. Nobody cares about your baby's body. <laughs> Nobody's like, my baby's got a whatever face, but his body is fucking sick. <laughs> you gotta see this baby's body, it's crazy. Takes his shirt off, he's got pecs, abs. He's got that V-cut right there, where's his diaper reel out. <laughs> baby is shredded. My son's really cute, too. My son's like the cutest kid in the world. I, th I really believe that. But let me tell you something. I think that's a trick of nature. I think every parent sees their kid as being the cutest kid in the world, you know? Because it makes you want to take care of him more. Like a cute baby, you're like, come here, you cute little baby. If you had an ugly baby, you're like, ew, get the fuck away from me, you gross, <laughs> big-headed baby. Fix your lip. Let me give you an idea how cute my son is. All the parents in the crowd, imagine your babies. Imagine the first time you saw your newborn baby. First time you laid your eyes on that gorgeous, precious little angel, okay? Now, what I want you to do is imagine a baby 15 times as cute. That's my son. <laughs> my son's so cute that if he got molested, I'd be really upset, but I'd still have to be like, okay, that pedophile had great taste in children. <laughs> Undeniable, that guy fucking nailed it. No, he was good. Like, you should have to choose the Gerber baby from a cell every year. Yeah, his mother didn't like that one either. I gotta be honest with you guys. <laughs> yeah, me and his mother, uh, we're co-parenting now, or as I call it, fighting over the phone. And uh, it's hard, but it's good. We're getting along now. We're both dating other people. She started dating a, a black guy right after me. Um, yeah, and it... <laughs> <laughs> mm. My sentiment exactly. <laughs> I got upset. I got upset because she started dating a black guy. And she got mad at me because she's like, you're a racist. And I'm like, I'm not racist. I am not racist. It has nothing to do with this man's color of his skin, okay? It's his big black cock. I can't get it out of my head. It's killing me inside. It's probably killing her inside too, to be honest. I don't want to get too scientific, but you know, she feels it. I'm out there dating too. Um, you know, I got a girlfriend. I was single for a while, though, and I was having a lot of unprotected sex. I, uh, I won't wear a condom. It's fucking crazy, dude. It's nuts. I can't wear a condom. It's so boring. It's like, it's like my dick is reading a book. I won't do it. <laughs> we just get to the end of this already. I'm bored. You know? And women will just pull out condoms now out of their purse. It's, it's a different time, 2018, because the old tricks don't work. The old trick was like, you pretend you forgot a condom, then you try to make her horny anyway. <laughs> Can I do it? Can I do it now? But women have condoms on them now. They fucking pull it out. I know another trick though. You know what you do if a woman pulls a condom out of her purse? You open it up and then you flick it in her eye like a rubber band. <laughs> I'll take the night in jail. It's hilarious every time. I don't give a shit. It's very funny. I tell the cops, I'm like, tell me it's not funny, officer. Tell me it's not funny. I'm like, it's funny, get in the car. What's everyone worried about, right? Herpes, that's a big one, right? Clap your hands if you have herpes. <laughs> really, New York City, really? <laughs> the numbers are out there, okay? What is it, it's one out of how many? That guy has herpes. <laughs> that's a test. If they know the facts and figures, just fucking know why, what do you got, a pamphlet? What do you know? What do you know, sir? If you get herpes, what happens? You start dating other people with herpes, right? I feel like I can get an okay chick in general population. I feel like I can get a way hotter chick in the herpes population, you know? I'm fucking in herpes nines and tens all day, dog. They're damaged. Are you kidding me? And there's gotta be an app for that. There's gotta be like a herpes harmony or warts app. Or if you're a little older and trying to stay discreet, Rashley Madison. <laughs> My son just went into kindergarten, which is a really fun age. He's in, uh, he goes to school here in New York City. It's a very progressive city. This is true, there's a trans child in his class, a little trans kid, five years old. And look, no matter how you feel about this, I, I just don't wanna hurt anybody's feelings, you know? So I'm like, keep that fucking child away from me. <laughs> I'm gonna be over here. 
keep that child over there because I'm not getting my son kicked out of this fucking school, okay? I'm gonna say something stupid, I'm gonna do something stupid, whatever. And look, I'll say, I'll say a controversial statement right now, okay? You cannot let a five-year-old change their gender, okay? You can't. And I'll tell you why, one reason, one reason only. Five-year-olds are fucking retarded. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever spoken to a five-year-old, but they never have any good ideas. <laughs> I asked my son the other day, I was like, James, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, Dad, I want to be a tiger. <laughs> it was very cute, but I'm not gonna cut off his dick, glue it to his ass, be like, oh, look, you're a tiger. Arr. Go get him, tiger. I used to say that I wouldn't care if my son was gay. Um, I know I would care if my son was gay, I gotta be honest with you guys. I know I would care, okay? And by the way, I'm very open-minded. I got a lot of gay friends. Who gives a shit? You know, I believe in gay marriage, but if I gotta be honest with you, I know I would care because something happened in my life, okay? Here's what happened. I have a, a dog named, named Sport, little Jack Russell Terrier, okay? And he's not fixed because I'm Puerto Rican and we don't do that. <laughs> So he's horny as shit. And people say it's cruel. I'm like, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I feel like, like if a genie came and said, I'm going to give your dog one sentence to say, and that's all I can say ever, it's just that one sentence, he'd be like, and go. And he'd be like, don't cut off my balls. <laughs> so this, this dog is fucking horny. He, he humps. Everything, he humps all these other dogs. I brought him to the dog park, right? Brought him to the dog park the other day and he started humping this other male dog. The dog's owner started fucking with me. He was like, yo son, pff, your dog is gay. <laughs> Those words broke my fucking heart. <laughs> That's how I know I would care if my son was gay because he said your dog is gay. I'm like, no sport. <laughs> Not my boy. <laughs> I got really defensive and angry. I was like, don't call my dog gay. Your dog's gay. He's just sitting there taking it. My dog is just dominating your homo dog like a man would. That's right, sport. Lick his asshole. Let him know his boss. Come on, let's go pick up some bitches. The hardest thing I've had to deal with so far being a father is watching my son get bullied. That was fucking rough, dude. You know, because you can't say anything. You can't step in. You got to watch it like a nature show. You know, like when a lion's going to kill a gazelle on a nature show, the production team just has to watch. They can't like, no, stop. And my son is not a lion. My son's that fucking bitch made gazelle. <laughs> Sucks. You know, you want to step in. I want to help out, you know, because let me tell you something. I could fuck up any five-year-old in the world. Bar none, line them up, knock them down. I'll take 10 at a time, I tell you right now. <laughs> and five-year-olds, I'll tell you, you can do shit you can't do in a real fight. Do like special moves like the one-inch punch. Whoosh. That is specially designed for a five-year-old. It's a perfect fucking height. Whoosh. Takes no effort for them, it's like a baseball bat to the face. They're like, whoosh, ah! <laughs> Plus my son got bullied by a girl. What are you doing when your kid's bullied by a girl? I just started making fun of him with everybody else. I was like, look at this pussy. Come on, everyone. He's getting beat up by a girl. Oh, man, your father must be so disappointed. <laughs> We're at the park playing with his favorite ball. This little girl comes up to him. She pushed him. She took his ball. He started crying. And I want to tell him, I was like, James, you're five years old. You can get away with anything. Punch her right in the fucking stomach and take your ball back. <laughs> you got a small window where you're allowed to hit a girl. I say take advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? And what do you do when your kid's bullied? I started watching the UFC with him. People think I'm crazy because I'm watching cage fighting with a five-year-old, but I'm like, fuck that. My son's not getting bullied by girls anymore, you know? So I was watching the fights with him recently, right? He was on my lap. His mom took a video of us watching the fight. She posted it to her Facebook. One of her friends posted a comment underneath the video. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe you let your son watch that violent sport. I was like, let him? He's five years old. I fucking make him. Are you crazy? <laughs> the kid has no say in this. I hold his head right up to the fucking TV set. <laughs> hold his eyeballs up on like Clockwork Orange. <laughs> I'm burning violent images into his brain. I'm creating a warrior. <laughs> Give me two more years, I wanna go over to her house and have my son beat the shit out of her husband in front of her kids just to prove a point. <laughs> 
is gonna ground and pound her vegan husband on her front lawn. I love it, dude. I love the UFC. That's my favorite sport in the world. Do you guys watch it? I love the UFC. It's the best sport. Best sport, bar none, okay? I'll tell you why. Because it is the only sport that has changed the way that men walk the fucking earth, okay? It is such a popular sport. There's an MMA gym in every city in this country, okay? You can't judge a book by its cover anymore. You don't know who fucking trains, you know? Like, sir, you look pretty physically weak. <laughs> I see you, I'm like, this is a nerdy man. There is no way that he will kick my ass. I would never say that to your face, though. I'm not fucking crazy. I say it to your face, next thing you know, I'm twisted into a pretzel, suck on my own dick, like, ah! Fuck that, not taking that chance, you know? By the way, you don't even have to train. All you gotta do is look the part. All you gotta do is get one of those tap out t-shirts with some flames on it. Nobody's fucking with that guy. It's just tap out right in the shirt, fuck that. <laughs> get an affliction shirt with a dragon across the shoulders. You're like, this guy either knows MMA or he loves Game of Thrones. Either way, that's a bad motherfucker right there. <laughs> I'm not messing with him. I take it a step further, you know what I do? I wear a karate uniform and carry a trophy. That's how I walk around. <laughs> Full karate gi, second place trophy. <laughs> yeah, second place. But then they're like, all right, that has to be real. They don't make fake second place trophies. <laughs> it's the second toughest man in the world. I got anger problems too. I'm really trying to fix that. I re that really is true about me. I got real fucking anger problems, you know? Here's what's fucked up. When I get angry, I lose control of my words, so my mouth just goes. I just fire shit off. It gets me into trouble all the time, right? I was going to a fight recently at a bar. Me and this guy, it's like really late at night one night, right? And uh, me and this guy were like arguing back and forth. And at one point he said this. He said, yeah, motherfucker, why don't you suck my dick? <laughs> I was all worked up. I wasn't thinking. My mouth was just going. I was like, yeah, why don't we go outside and I'll suck that dick. <laughs> That's not even talking shit. That's just offering to suck another man's dick. <laughs> Confidently. What's up, motherfucker? Your dick, my throat, outside. Let's do this shit. He had two friends with him. He's like, I'll suck his dick. I'll suck his dick. I'll suck every dick in this motherfucker. What's up? Sucking dicks all day. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I think every man has a little bit of a, like aggression in him, a little bit of anger in him, right? I bet most guys in this room have been here before. You've been in a position where you've had to have punched a hole in your wall. Yeah, and I said those, those words very specifically, had to punch a hole. Because you drive us out of our fucking minds, ladies. And you drive us to extreme violence sometimes. And sometimes we just gotta fucking break some shit, okay? Gotta break, and you know what, how about this? I paid for that fucking wall. <laughs> That's my wall. I'll punch whatever wall I fucking want to because I'm a man. Yeah. But you want to know a secret? We'll never punch a brick wall. We know what we're doing. <laughs> we act like we can't control ourselves, but we will climb eight flights of stairs to find the shittiest, thinnest closet in the house. Some bullshit paper-thin closet that our uncle installed in 1984. Just punch 80 holes in that one closet. <laughs> Cover it with a poster. <laughs> uh, one inch punch. <laughs> it works on closets too. <laughs> or you'll punch sheetrock, but first you're like, hold on, give me my stud finder. Give me five minutes. <laughs> hold on, I don't know if this thing is structural. Give me five fucking minutes. I'm furious. I'm gonna call in a contractor, bitch. Give me a second. I'm trying to be a better person. I tried, to, uh, I tried to take part in this thing called Random Act of Kindness, okay? And if you don't know what it is, the idea is you're supposed to wake up every single day, and you're supposed to commit one random act of kindness for another human being, something small, okay? And uh, the idea is if everybody did this, if everybody took part in this, we could inherently create some sort of positive energy, and we could change the world, okay? And that's really fucking gay. <laughs> but I wanted to do it anyway. First act of kindness, I'm in Dunkin' Donuts, I'm buying a cup of coffee. This guy walks in next to me, goes to order a bagel. So I was like, you know what, for my first act of kindness, I'm gonna buy this guy's bagel. So he goes to pay for it. I'm like, hey, pal, don't you worry about that. I'm gonna buy your bagel. He goes, oh, it's okay, man. Thank you so much, I appreciate that, but I'll, I'll buy my own bagel.
So I'm like, yeah, no, I know. It's just so, it's just so random act of kindness thing. I don't know. I'm just trying to create some positive energy in the world. I, I would love to do that for you. Please, please, let me buy you a bag. He goes, all right, buddy. <laughs> Enough. I just said I'll buy my own bag. I'll... So then I'm like, look, man, I don't know what your fucking problem is. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta sit there with like a fucking attitude. I'm trying to do a nice thing for you. How about you let me buy you a fucking bagel, bro? <laughs> he goes, look, man, I, I don't know you. I'm like, yeah, that's right, motherfucker. You don't know me. You don't know me. How about I'll suck your dick right now? You want to get your dick sucked? What's up? Suck your dick all day. Where you go? Where you go? I think it's funny. Gay shit's funny to me. Me and my friends would joke around like we're gay all the time. You ever play dick chicken? That's where you and a buddy, you hold each other's dicks in each other's hands and you stare at each other to see who will laugh first. Sometimes nobody laughs first. You just fall asleep like that. Wake up in the morning, get some breakfast. It's a good time. Let me lighten the mood in here a little bit. Um, my, my father was murdered when I was four years old. It's true. It's true, my dad was stabbed to death when I was four years old, which is the most Puerto Rican way to go. I don't know if you know anything about my culture. It is the number one cause of death in Puerto Rico. Do you know that, being stabbed? I swear to God. Number two, falling out of a banana tree. Jet ski collisions. Stingray murder suicides. <laughs> Hurricanes. <laughs> I know, fifth, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. My father was truly murdered when I was a child, uh, when I was four years old. I have two other friends, Victor Garcia and Joe Santiago, and both of their fathers were also stabbed when they were kids. I swear to God, this is true. So we've got this bond where three Hispanic kids, all three of our fathers were stabbed when we were growing up. And here's what's funny. All three of us have been accused of acting like we're white. And I was thinking about this. I don't think we're acting like we're white. I think that we're like evolving to not get fucking stabbed. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's science. I'm like a fish growing legs, crawling out of a lake. Like, fuck that, there's Puerto Ricans in that lake. <laughs> I'm a lizard, I'm a lizard now, okay. Cool. I'll tell you guys a story about the most embarrassed I've ever been in my entire life. Um, it was when I was a kid. It was the first time that I was caught masturbating. I got caught when I was nine years old by my sister, who was 11 years old. Yeah, that's particularly embarrassing. Not only because it's my sister, but because at nine years old, when I used to masturbate, I didn't actually know how to jerk off. I learned that like way later on in life. And I'll tell you that story in a minute. But when I was nine years old, <laughs> When I was nine years old, I used to masturbate by humping everything, okay? I would hump my pillow, the mattress, my couch. You ever fucked your couch before, bro? Of course you have. Put your dick in between the couch cushions, have your way with it. Why do you think they call it a love seat? Use your imagination. <laughs> Plus, my grandma's couch was covered in plastic. You just get a little sweaty. <laughs> Easy cleanup. My favorite thing to hump um, when I was a kid was this gigantic teddy bear that I'd won at the Rockland County Fair. Huge giant white teddy bear wearing a little tiny red t-shirt that said, I love you. <laughs> this thing was teasing me for years, begging for it. <laughs> and I used to come home from the third grade every day. I would drop my books on the floor. I would drag this bear into the bathroom by its leg like a fucking caveman. <laughs> and go to town on it. This one time in particular, I was fucking the bear on the bathroom floor. I mean, really fucking the bear this time. I had one of its legs on my shoulders. I was choking it, calling it names. I was showing this bear the time of its fucking life. I must have not have locked the door because I looked up into the doorway. I see my 11-year-old sister standing there with a horrified look on her face. We make eye contact. She just screams, slams the door, runs out of the house, out the back door, into this big wooded area behind my house. My sister was missing for four hours. Nobody knew where she was. Four hours, this little 11-year-old girl was missing in the woods. Everyone was terrified. I was terrified. All I can remember thinking at nine years old with my little innocent mind was, dear God in heaven, please let a pack of wolves come and fucking kill her. <laughs> so then nobody will ever know that I fucked my teddy bears. Please, dear God, let her be dead. Amen. 
Or you know it would be ironic if a real bear came and dragged her off into his cave and used her to masturbate? <laughs> like, ah, 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 and then he killed her. <laughs> she lived, it's okay. I learned how to jerk off, I remember. I remember when I learned how to jerk off. It was, uh, it was August 30th, 1993, I was 11 years old. It was SummerSlam, Lex Luger versus Yokozuna. I remember this shit, it was a big night, okay? I was at my buddy John Hickey's house, and uh, yeah, he, we, a bunch of us were there, a bunch of little kids were there watching WrestleMania, okay? And his parents had gone to bed, and uh, he pulled out his dad's porno tape. He's like, you guys wanna watch a porno tape? We're like, of course, we've been watching sweaty men wrestle all night, of course. <laughs> We want to get boners together now. <laughs> you didn't have to ask. So he puts in the porno tape, and John Hickey just starts beating his big old dick. It was even big for an 11-year-old. It was crazy. <laughs> starts beating his dick. And uh, all the other kids, they start pulling out their dicks and start beating their dicks right there. And I'm like, where are the teddy bears? What are we doing? <laughs> that? Oh, OK. That's the first time I jerked off. I okay, bet you guys are, you're applauding for a group of young boys masturbating. <laughs> Fucking freaks. Now look, it sounds gay. I know it sounds gay. A bunch of little kids masturbating in a room together, but you gotta be honest with you guys. We went to separate corners of the room. We didn't look at each other. We didn't touch each other. There was nothing gay about it. Nothing gay. All right, well, there was five of us in four corners of the room. So one of us had to be gay. <laughs> We drew straws. That guy lives in Miami now. He's having a good life. <laughs> he loves his life. I worked at Hot Topic when I was 16 years old for two days. Two days, and it was because it was a two-day training program. And on the second day of the training program, they went over what you were to do if you were to see a shoplifter. So I'm a 16-year-old goth kid. I'm like, what do you do? You grab him, bite him on the neck? I'm like, no, you can't touch him. You gotta call security. I was like, all right, security comes and fucks him up, right? They're like, no, 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 security can't touch him either. Nobody from the mall can put their hands on this person because if this person gets hurt, they can turn around and sue the mall. So security has to verbally detain the person, call the cops, the cops have to come from the precinct to the mall, to the store, and arrest the person. So I was like, cool, I quit. I'm gonna rob this place blind every day. <laughs> Why would you tell me that? And we did, we robbed that fucking mall blind every day. You can do it today, the law exists, I looked it up. They can't touch you, fuck them. It's true. You know what we started doing? We started robbing the wishing well outside of the Rainforest Cafe twice a week. We used to clear out all the change from the wishing well. You remember the movie Goonies? Remember halfway through the movie where they thought they found the treasure, but really they were at the bottom of the town's wishing well, and they didn't give a fuck. They started grabbing the coins anyway, right? They're like, fuck this, they start grabbing them, right? And then the one girl stops them. She's like, guys, stop, what are you doing, stop. We can't take these coins. Each one of these coins is another little kid's wish or dream. And it's a very touching scene in that movie. Me and my friends were smoking a blunt watching that scene. We were like, we gotta get those dreams. Do you know how much of a boss you sound like when you order your weed with children's dreams? <laughs> sound like Freddy Krueger. You're like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> I think I look. I love New York City. I really do. Um, but it's not the best city in the world. I'll tell you guys um, about the best city in the world, which is Cabo in Mexico. Has anybody been? It's the best. It's the best. Let me tell you why. Best thing about Cabo. This is true. There's free cocaine in Cabo. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just gotta know how to get it. Now listen up, this is gonna be the best TripAdvisor tip you've ever received in your entire life. Free cocaine in Cabo, here's what you have to do. You must leave the resort, okay? Now the first thing they're gonna tell you when you go to Mexico is do not leave the resort. Those people don't know how to get free cocaine. <laughs> Those people are paying for their blow every time, okay? Listen to me. You gotta leave at the resort, you gotta go down to the local beach where everyone's like partying and hanging out, and you gotta hang out for about 20 minutes. After about 20 minutes, a little shady looking Mexican guy is gonna come up to you. He's gonna be covered in tattoos, he's not gonna be wearing any shoes. That's the tell. <laughs> he's gonna be like, excuse me, senor. Would you like to try a hit of cocaine? And you're gonna be like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Who would say no to that question? Plus, that comedian told me you are gonna be here. You showed up right on time. That's incredible, 20 minutes on the dot. That's fucking crazy. 
and you're going to take a, a free hit of cocaine. Then he's going to be like, Senor, would you like to purchase some cocaine? And this part's important, okay? At this point, you have to be like, no. <laughs> and walk away from that man. And that's how you get free cocaine. <laughs> that's pretty simple. Yeah, but check this shit out. If you go like 30 yards up the beach and hang out another 20 minutes, another shady looking Mexican guy's gonna come up to you. Completely different guy, not wearing any fucking shoes. He's like, excuse me, senor. Would you like to try it? You're gonna cut him off. You're gonna be like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna try some cocaine. <laughs> Let's party, baby, Cabo, woo! <laughs> and you're gonna get another free hit of cocaine. It's like the food court at the mall, you know? <laughs> Nobody buys bourbon chicken. <laughs> Just come back and get a free sample of bourbon chicken whenever the fuck you want one. Be like, I'll be back in 20 minutes. Thanks, idiot. So that's what I was doing. I was getting free samples of cocaine all night in Mexico, okay? I get a free hit of cocaine, go 30 yards up the beach, hang out 20 minutes. Get another free hit of cocaine, go 30 yards up the beach, hang out another 20 minutes. Get another free hit of cocaine, go 30 yards up the beach, hang out another 20 minutes. Four hours later, I was in Chile. I don't know how I got there. <laughs> I don't know what happened. All I know is I had a blast in North or Central America that night. <laughs> I blacked out, that's the truth. You wanna know the, the absolute truth? I don't remember what happened, but I really did black out. It was the only time in my life that I've ever truly blacked out, okay? I woke up the next day in my hotel room at like 3 p.m. My wallet was missing, my shoes were missing. My first thought, was I selling coke on the beach with those guys last night? <laughs> what happened to my fucking shoes? So did you join a cartel? And I fucked up, I made a mistake because I called my girlfriend. I should have called up one of my buddies, but I called up my girlfriend and I told her the truth, which was a huge mistake. Because I just wanted to vent, okay? And women, they experience things differently. So I told her that I blacked out, followed these guys up the beach. You know what she started doing? She started crying. She started crying, okay? She's like, oh my God, are you fucking retarded? And I wanted to be like, okay, the R word, really? That's not cool. What are you? <laughs> it wasn't the time, so. She was like, what would you have done if you had been kidnapped or raped? That's what she said to me. And uh, this was kind of a heavy moment in my life. I gotta be honest with you guys, because we take this shit for granted. As men, we don't really look at shit that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we live our lives like we're invincible. And women, you gotta worry about this shit every day of your lives. You gotta take your drinks to the, to the bathroom. You have to worry about guys trying to hurt you, you know? It's fucked up. And then I started thinking about it even more, like, like how I would deal with something like that. Like, men and women are built so differently, you know? It started, like, really fucking me up and getting in my head. Like, let's play a game, okay? Like, miss, will you play this game with me? Okay. Hypothetically speaking, let's say you go to Mexico, you get kidnapped, you get raped. <laughs> now, just taking a look at you, I'm gonna assume this is in the top five, six worst experiences of your life. <laughs> top 10, good, okay. <laughs> I'm assuming if this happens, no matter how much therapy you go to, no matter how much time passes, no matter what, you're probably never gonna truly get over this experience. It's probably gonna fuck you up for the rest of your life. Am I right? Of course. Let me explain to you the difference between me and this woman. If I got kidnapped and raped in Mexico, it would bother me for like two hours tops. <laughs> After like an hour and a half, I'm gonna be like, all right, there's free Coke on the beach out there. I'm not gonna sit here like an asshole and waste my Saturday night, am I right? If I don't go party, the rapists win, and I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna let them win tonight. Look, the point of all of this is that women are sensitive, okay? And <laughs> I shouldn't have called my girlfriend. I should have called up one of my buddies. If I would have called up one of my male friends, it would have been a way different reaction. Dude, I think I got kidnapped and raped in Mexico last night. But you probably loved it, you homo, click. <laughs> You probably went to Mexico just for the cock, click. <laughs> that is the, uh, the world's longest rape joke. It really is. It is. And by the way, it, it, it's a dying art, the rape joke. Nobody's doing them anymore. 
Nobody's doing them anymore, you know? By the way, the only reason that rape joke works is because I'm the one getting raped in the joke. <laughs> it's like a dude's getting raped. You guys are loving it. You're like, this guy's getting raped. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> it's like a good family-friendly show. I love it. This guy's getting raped. And then I put it on her for one second. Everyone got uncomfortable. I was like, that's not cool. What are you doing? That's a woman. We don't joke about raping a woman. Then I put it back on me again. Everyone's like, oh, thank God. This guy's getting raped again. This is... <laughs> Thank God he's being raped. This is so funny. Um, I tried to do a rape joke on Last Comic Standing when I was on that show a few years ago. Um, and I'll, I'll end on this. <laughs> I did. I tried to do a rape joke on television. I did it in the audition process, and I got onto the show. I'll give you the quick version of the joke. It's a bad joke, okay? So I, usually I wear a hat. So I say, with my hat on, it looks like I might be a college student. And with my hat off, it looks like I might rape a college student. So yeah, I thought this was a good idea to do for NBC's Last Comic Standing, obviously. <laughs> obviously, that's where you would do that joke. And uh, I did the joke in the audition process and I got onto the show. I got into the top 100 comedians of the country and we're gonna be taping it and we're gonna be filming it in front of a huge studio audience in Los Angeles. And when you do things on television, it's different, okay? Because on television, you have to transcribe every joke word for word. Every single joke word for word. You have to send it into the producers and they have to approve everything. So I, I wrote out my set, everything included the words rape a college student, sent it off to NBC. I was like, they're gonna love it. They're gonna love this set. Five minutes later, I get an email back from the producers. And in the subject line, I swear to God, it says, are you fucking retarded? <laughs> and I went to like, okay, really, NBC? That's not, what are we doing? I left it alone. And they're like, you can't say rape a college student on TV. You can't say those words. You have to take that joke out or you have to change the joke, okay? And they, they let me change it. You know what they let me say? This is what I, this is what I changed it to. I changed it to kidnap a college student. I just changed one word. I changed the word rape to the word kidnap. That's it. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this is pretty stupid. They really look at it like America as being dumb people. Because let's be honest about this. If I'm gonna kidnap this college student, I'm probably gonna rape her. <laughs> Look, I'm not out there kidnapping college students. You don't gotta worry about this shit. But why else would I be kidnapping this chick? <laughs> I'm trying to fucking study. Guess again, NBC. Listen, New York City, you guys are the fucking greatest <laughs> comedy audiences in the world. I love you guys for coming out tonight. Thank you so much for supporting this. It means so much more than you know. Good night.